here with uh, Douglas Isles, Investment Specialist at Platinum Asset Management. And uh, Douglas, what do you think is the biggest mistake Australian investors are making today? Well, Mark, I think uh, you may not be surprised as I saying this as uh, overseas equity managers, but we actually do think genuinely Australian investors do not have enough money invested in overseas markets today. Yep. And then perhaps I could take you through why. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think, I think the first thing that's most important is that, and one of the things that really guides our, our investment process, if you like, is a belief that people have a tendency to extrapolate the past into the future. So, so people tend to think what has happened will always happen. Yeah. Um, and what we notice and what we observe is things change. Yep. And people change, governments change, competitiveness changes, technology Currencies changes, change. currencies yep. change, Every, everything changes. So, but, yep. so let's start off by acknowledging that having had a large exposure to Australia for the last decade plus has been good. Yes. People have done very well from that. We've not had a recession here going back to the, to the early 90s. We've had strong wage growth. We've had strong property markets. The equity markets have done well. Our currency as well has, has risen from you know, near 50 cents to, to close to a dollar. So we've had all these things going well for us. We've had the benefit of imputation credits for equity investors, and we've obviously had China's investment boom. So all these things have been great yep. uh, for Australian investors. But what have we got today? Where are, where are we now? The Australian equity market is very concentrated. You've got almost yep. uh, you know, 40 plus percent companies, in, in yeah. banks, 20 percent perhaps in resources. So it's quite a narrow um, investment universe that people are facing. Yep. Secondly, think about valuations. And when we look around the world on a relative basis, Australia is not particularly attractive when it comes to, uh, comes to where we see valuations. Our currency is no longer competitive and you see it particularly hitting things like the manufacturing industry, but at 90 yeah. plus cents to the US dollar, um, Australia is struggling in certain industries from a, from a competitiveness perspective. And finally, um, the home bias that we have, the, the amount to which Australians are exposed to their home market is greater than any other market in the world that we can identify other than the US. Yep. And as you, would, uh, as you would know, the US has got a much broader range of opportunities for investors. Yep. So I think that's where we are today. And when we invest, we have to look forward rather than looking back. Yep. And, and just to put perspective on uh, where, where Australia sits in terms of uh, the Australian share market, how much yep. is that as a percentage of the overall share market around the world? It's a, it's a very small number. Probably so. around 3%. So you can look at Australia, and population-wise, I think we're less than half of a percent of the global population. GDP, we probably sit one to something, one to two. Stock yep. market-wise, we're probably around three. So, so if you've got we punch above our weight, which tends to tell you our market may not be cheap. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but when we invest, we, we look forward. So, so first of all, the Chinese investment boom, we think you know, that's coming to an end. China is changing. China's trying to become yeah. more domestically focused, more consumption focused. I mentioned valuations. You know, we can find valuations around the world that are cheaper than what's on offer in the Australian market, and particularly yeah. in Asia, uh, but also to some extent in Europe and, and certain sectors in, in the US. Yep. Um, but one of the things that, you know, as 20 years of investment firm, one of the big things we would, we would point out is the growth in the opportunity set. What yeah. can you invest in in overseas market as a yeah. foreigner? Pharmaceuticals, technology, uh, technology manufacturing, yeah. etc. And the yeah. big thing has been that more and more markets have opened up to foreigners. Companies are being born every day, if you like. While I mentioned earlier, we, we, we sit with a relatively narrow opportunity set here. So there's the growth in the opportunity set, but there's also the growth in and the trends, if you like. Pharma, you mentioned technology. Um, manufacturing, auto, um, capex in the US. There's various trends that we cannot capture here in this, in this domestic market as yeah. much as anything else. But finally, I think as well as the opportunity set, the big thing that we observe our currency. People are aware today is a great time to buy things online, whether you're shopping, you know, yes. US websites, Don't great, know, time, to go to, great yeah. time to go to Bali or whatever for an overseas holiday. Yeah. But people aren't applying that same logic to investment markets. And we think that people are missing the opportunity today if they're not using the strong Australian dollar to yeah. buy cheaper and it's often better companies in overseas markets. Okay. Look, they're really good points. Thanks for your time with that, uh, Douglas, and uh, certainly excellent opportunities to invest uh, outside of Australia. That's great. Thanks very much, Mark. Thanks, Thanks. for having me on. Okay.